the biggest story of Sunday to me is Joe Burrow. I love the fact that Brock Purdy, guys, Nooch, neighborhood picks going over Sunday right now. Cincinnati beats Buffalo, 49ers beat Dallas, but first with the Cincinnati game. Like we've been saying, Buffalo, the Super Bowl betting favorite by Vegas all year. Um, it's always been Buffalo KC talks. And after 365 days, the AFC championship goes back through Cincinnati. Cincinnati is the AFC champs. Nobody talked about them going into this year. Talked about KC and Buffalo. But technically... The AFC title runs through Cincinnati. And yesterday, with Joe Burrow and Cincinnati playing the way they did and directly outplaying Josh Allen, my biggest takeaway from the, from the day and the season is Joe Burrow elevated himself past Josh Allen definitively. There's no more... You can't say Mahomes, Allen, and then Bur no, 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 no. With the way Allen played, in combination with the way Burrow played, it there's a difference. Joe Joey B solidified himself as the other best quarterback in the NFL, and it was clear. Twenty-three for thirty-six, two hundred and forty-two yards, two touchdowns in the snow. Josh Allen, twenty-five for forty-two. 265, no touchdowns, and an interception. Um, the whole game, I mean, Buffalo played like a finesse indoor team with no running game that's trying to play in Buffalo, New York in the snow. It didn't work. Um, Dawson Knox led all receivers in, in uh, uh, catches. Shout out to Ryan Patterson for calling that. But the thing is, I made a little piece on Diggs. Maybe somebody should have slipped Stefan Diggs a stat sheet before he had a total unraveling of, of his, he lost his shit because Stefan Diggs led Buffalo in targets with 10 targets. Ready for the kicker? He led both teams in targets. He had more targets than T. Higgins. He had more targets than Chase. He had more targets than everyone on both teams. So when you lead the whole game in targets and then you lose your shit on the quarterback and storm out, get out of here. Get out of here. But um, listen, there's four teams left. Cincinnati, also a 100-yard runner next uh, yesterday with Mixon, 108 yards. So Buffalo had no running game, but Cincinnati had no linemen. I hear a lot of Josh Allen. Uh, Josh Allen. I hear a lot of Von Miller. Excuse me. Oh, the Bills needed Von Miller. Well, those, the defensive linemen and the linebackers that were rushing for Buffalo, they were going against three backup offensive linemen. There's only five guys, center, two guards, two tackles. Three of them were backups. So, yeah, they didn't have Bob Miller, but they didn't have their starting linemen. You still didn't get to them. So Cincinnati deserves to be there. Joe Burrow elevated himself as the man along with Mahomes. And because Mahomes on one leg, it's going to be a tough call. I have so much respect for the four teams left in this tournament that I'm not counting out anybody yet. I'm recapping this weekend. I love what I saw from Cincinnati. They look sharp. They're going <clears> to <throat> they're gonna play KC <clears throat> tough. They're going to play them tough. So that's going to be a good game. 49ers, come on. Th that's the story of the year. The story of the day was Burrow. The story of the season is Brock Purdy and the 49ers. That's what makes this such a fun weekend coming up for the championship weekend. 49ers rookie quarterback. I remember Marino went in his second year when I was a kid, lost. Brady went in his second year and won. I don't ever recall a rookie going to and winning the Super Bowl. That would be the story of the year. So when I hit the morning first take, and I see Stephen A. in a fucking Cowboys hat and a Jerry Cole. Nobody gives a fuck about the Cowboys that much. Get, get on task with what the real stories are. That's why nobody watches that shit anymore. How you doing, Neighborhood Picks? Uh, but um, the story of the year is Brock Purdy and the Niners. He outplayed Dak yesterday. Uh, 19 for 29, 214 yards. Dak, 23 for 37. That's low. 
two, inter two interceptions, 206 yards. I believe Dak Prescott hit his ceiling as a player. And, you know, everybody put a lot of stock in that, that opening week against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay was an 8-9 and nine team that their MO, their, their, the MO on them is that they were inconsistent and they stunk all year. So, you know, Dak never had that big game like Burrow had yesterday. That, that, that was a clutch game. But uh, Prescott got outplayed by Purdy. Too many turnovers. You can't do it like that. So Prescott with his 15 interceptions and a handful of games this year that he missed. Uh, Josh Allen with all his turnovers. You cannot put those guys at the big boy table. I never had Dak there. But Allen really forget about it with him too. But um, Purdy, he's got command. I seen him hit Ayuk on a third and long. I seen him hit McCaffrey at the sticks at a third and eight. I mean, he's making enough plays. You got who? Who wouldn't want to be teammates with George Kittle? Who wouldn't want to be the quarterback with Kittle and Debo and Ayuk and McCaffrey and Mitchell? They got a lot of weapons, man. A lot of weapons. It's gonna be one hell of a conference weekend. I'm just slowly recapping. I love the 49ers how they look. I like how Cincy looks. Same thing with Philly and KC. We got four heavyweights and one hell of a championship Sunday. We're going to wrap it up here because I got Ryan Patterson coming on. We got a couple podcasts coming with all the, the, the sports betting, who's listed at what, what we think of the, the actual matchups going forward. We'll get more into them. Just wanted to recap the, uh, the weekend. All right, Nooch Neighborhood Picks. I'll see you guys soon.